Now, will you be having your feet up the entire time like that? Yes. And being out of the shot? This is what I want to know, as, as someone who's never done drugs. Although I think I have had, um, what, do, what do they give you in the hospital? I, not a Xanax, uh, after surgery. Propofol? Uh, maybe. Percocet? Do they do that after yeah, surgery? Sure. That was the best. I get I get that. Like when Wouldn't I you say Percocet pool, felt a lot like floating on a cloud of titties? Well, I didn't. I didn't care about anything, right? What I'm saying is now you're you now you're past that, right? You're years past that. You're a smart person, so you could look back with some perspective and you could articulate for me, who doesn't understand this because I'm half a moron or maybe a full moron. You could articulate for me. I get. That the feeling is euphoric. Obviously, I get that people would seek a euphoric feeling over and over again. Obviously, I get that it's probably not the euphoric feeling that you're addicted to. It's probably the chemical change that your disgusting feet are addicted to, right? So it's the chemical change that's going on in your brain that's causing the addiction. Not, I love feeling like this all the time. You love feeling like it, but you might love feeling like it one time or two times. The fact that you love feeling like it every day is probably a function of the change that goes on in your brain as a result of whatever those chemicals are doing. Right? Say that again. <laughs> what I'm saying is, although you love the feeling, that might only last one or two times, right? You might say one or two times, but when you become addicted to it, the chemical change, that switch, is saying... I want this feeling all the time and I can't stop myself from having this feeling all the time. But it's not like that. What are you talking about? It's not like that. You did look at my fucking camera. You did it. You, you were, you were high. You said for 40 years or whatever, whatever number you said. It's, it's everything about it. You want, you want to, you want to get the drugs. You yeah. want to fucking whole experience. You want to, you want everyone to leave. You want to rip open the bag. You want to put the, the powder in the spoon. You want to okay. put the water in the spoon. The you want to cook it. I get it. You want to draw it up. You want to do the whole thing. But and then, and the, then yeah. once you, you get the needle inside of you or, right. or you snort it or you smoke it or however you do it, mm -hmm. um, you're gone. You don't have to worry anymore. But you You have a reprieve from, from everything. What's everything? If all you're doing is this, what is everything? Everything that isn't this. Well, and, 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 and it creates uh, this separation. You know, it's like the world is a pretty continuous... When you're not using, mm -hmm. the world is a very continuous thing. Okay. Sometimes people hate going to work okay. and they love coming home or maybe some other people hate coming home. Right. But, but your life is pretty continuous. Yep. Once you become addicted to drugs... It is an ocean of sorrow and an island of peace. And the drugs are the island of peace. And once you do them, the ocean of sorrow is in the past. You know, and is and, the sorrow some sort of past trauma that you're sure. The the ocean is a melange of past trauma, mm. the everyday burden, fucking relationships that are failing because all you want is the island of peace, mm. fucking getting the money to get to the island of peace, keeping your job so you can get the money to get to the island of peace, maintaining the masquerade so you, nobody worries about you to fuck up your high when you're on the island of peace. This ocean, it's like the island was once big and people could kind of step foot on the island, right. but as the addiction gets worse, the ocean claims the island yeah. and the only thing that can stand on the island is you yeah, and you nothing and else can fit and the drugs and then huh. you're safe on the island and you take one step off and you're fucking drowning so why doesn't that happen after the first time you use heroin it happens to some people the island's really big i think that's this metaphor the first time you do it the island's it's like really fucking big. america and every time you do it you lose a little bit more of the island but is it getting smaller from a technical perspective because the drug is interfering with your brain. I don't and, know. And I, I just know that the consequences, how do you not know? Do you not know? The consequences of yeah. taking the drug on the rest of your life and on your brain is such that the ocean gets bigger 
and know, the the island gets smaller. Right. So the brain chemistry and it's all part and parcel to the same thing. You do heroin the first time, you're like, wow, I got fucked up. I, I'm not going to do that again. Tomorrow I got to go to work. Then it's mm-hmm. like two weeks later, you're like, all right, I'll do it again. And then you do it once a week, and then you're doing it on Wednesdays, and then you do it mm-hmm. Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday. Right. Then you do it Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But you're not doing it because the feeling, at that point, you're doing it because the drug has changed your chemistry to the point where you're dependent on the drug, and it feels good. Right? Say it I mean, again. Got, I'm saying you're not becoming addicted to it just because it feels so good. You're becoming addicted to it because it's the addictive. chemistry is changing. Right. It's and both. it feels great. It's both. If it felt horrible to become addicted, it's both. maybe you wouldn't be as addicted or it would be really, really, really painful to be addicted. I know this, and it's interesting. One thing that's totally true, and we're gonna this is not going to be a long video. This is gonna be, we're going to end this in a second. I think it should be two hours. Minimum. Cigarettes mm-hmm. and heroin... Yes. We're both insanely addictive for me, okay. for most people. Yeah. Um, and yet the first time I smoked a cigarette, it wasn't easy. It wasn't a good experience. And the mm. first time I did heroin, it wasn't a good experience. Right. Those were both things that I kind of had to acquire. They were, they were. You thing- were looking for something. I mean. Sub- subconsciously. Uh, yeah, I was looking. looking for I was looking for shit to cope with feeling uncomfortable. Right, and so you found it, and unfortunately, at least one of them is so addictive. They this. both were. But would you say that cigarettes feel so good? No, but it. But what cigarettes did, I didn't want to not smoke them i mean and when i say that i mean all day you're talking about like what anxiety or something i just didn't want to not be smoking i if i would have a cigarette i remember when i was in college i think i started smoking what what did it do it staved off other things it it, it made me focus on the cigarette Mm. it made me think that i it was cigarettes to me, are the most seductive lie in all of addiction because it's such so you, a it's so such a mirage. Yeah, it's such it's such bullshit. It's like, but you buy into this idea that you have these five minutes are yours, and in these five minutes, you're 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 in this other place. But it's bullshit. I, I don't even know how to describe it, it. Is it that it feels good to smoke a cigarette? Like the nicotine, there's actually something that's making you feel feels, good. It feels good, but it doesn't the feel high? like... Some people will say that it gives them a little heady feeling. I did it because... You need a, a, a ritual or something. It was a ritual, but it was also, again, a moment where nobody else could interfere with my... I could control exactly how I wanted right. to feel. So it's I knew like a behavioral... It's I could control my existence. It's that same island. When I'm on that cigarette, I'm on my island. You can't fuck with me. It's my time. I can't, the world, like if I'm at work, I go smoke and I don't have to worry about work. I just have to huh. smoke. If I, I don't, if I'm at a family function, I'm going to go have a cigarette. I'm gone. And, you, and you'll literally be by yourself. Yes. And or it, with other people who smoke though. Right. But you're all on the island together then. <laughs> anyway, enough. Enough I love of this. this. I want to keep talking about this topic. Well, we can we can no, come we do it now, come back another time and we'll talk about this that. again. Very cool. Um, thank you, Howard. So do we have to do a stay strong at the end of this? Oh, we're always staying strong. For Chris. Stay strong, Dopey Nation, and fucking toodles, toodles for, for Chris. Chris.